So I'll open the floor now to questions. If Aram and uh, Mal can come up to answer questions. Um, yes, could you just rise and so we can all see you? I think you bring up an excellent point, which is that under the right circumstances, new technologies can spread very, very rapidly. So you're absolutely right. It's not like it's, it's not a hopeless cause, but obviously it's going to be harder for technologies that are not about getting more income, but about reducing environmental burden. It's going to be difficult and about spreading technologies that increases income. But still, I, I agree with you fully that exactly this example should encourage us that the right technology that answers the needs of the farmers will spread like fire, but it's our task to understand what these circumstances are. And, we, and when the government is deeply engaged, when the technology is right, when the, when the, when the situation is ripe, things do spread. And I'm sure this will happen um, for, for also environmentally beneficial technologies. Now, why don't farmers adapt? First of all, when you ask farmers, they always tell you they don't have enough money. Okay, that's, it's, but that can mean a lot of different things. So that's why normally we, of course, we ask farmers, but we take the approach that their, you know, what they reveal through their choices, through their actions, is the right way to ask them. You know, so when you ask them just why didn't you adopt something, they always tell you it's too expensive. But what is it when you unpack it? When you see how they actually make choices, I think this is usually more revealing about the real reasons, and that's why we do this kind of research. But please don't be depressed. I think I'm optimistic, and I think everybody should be very optimistic. We just have to work hard. I work in Africa where it's much quicker. Well, I mean, in Africa, even green revolution techniques have not spread in Africa, so, right? You, you should not be depressed. If you, if you still work in Africa, it means you're very optimistic, and you should be. <laughs> Yes, next, next question. Uh, yes, assuming uh, all the world becomes the Vigos, um, is there a way to, uh, is that sustainable? Becomes Vigo, like eating only plants. Um, vegan, sorry. Okay, who are you addressing the question to? Sorry. Um, I would say uh, Ron, or I think Ron. Uh, answer that? Mal or Ram. Okay. Can you again repeat your question? Sorry. Um, assuming um, all the world becomes vegan, uh, is there is that sustainable? So you're asking if the world all turned to be vegans, we would get rid of all of the problems that we've discussed with meat. Um, there are societies that are are fairly uh, successful being vegan, so I'm not going to say that one could not have a successful society doing that. I think that uh, the human condition and traditions will make that to be a very difficult uh, transition to make. So uh, I, I think that's probably uh, about as much as I can speculate on that. I just want to say I think you should wait for the next session and you'll get some answers. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question. Um, we talked about uh, culture and we talked about uh, agriculture in India and my question is, did you try to look at success stories in India and see whether what does work uh, for farmers there to adopt more um, sustainable agriculture? And if, if you did, does that have something to do with the local culture that might help them promote? Uh, 
look, I don't claim to have answers to the big questions. These are just isolated studies. We're just trying to scratch the surface of a very complex problem. We need to do more work like this, and more people should be involved in this kind of work. So I, I don't, I, I haven't, we haven't covered all the different technologies and all the different experiences so far. I think that many things do spread very rapidly, you know, and like maybe these are not going to be the technologies that people here are going to cheer, but like BT cotton has spread very, very quickly in India. Okay, so some things do spread quickly. Um, more sustainable technologies, is, it's harder, but under the right conditions, they will also spread. And they, for example, drip irrigation is spreading very rapidly in some parts of India. But I just can't give you a full answer recipe when things spread or not. We're just trying to understand. It's very complicated. Sorry. I think, I think that the, the issue of culture is a very important part. We're talking about cultural diversity. Um, and I think that uh, we need to have uh, much more sensitivity to bottom-up approaches. And I think that one of the issues which we look at is um, how do we bring on um, uh, people, poets, writers, um, uh, people who are um, uh, accepted within the culture of the community to be involved. And these are very, very critical parts in, in, ev in evolution, especially which I've seen in India and in China. Uh, and I think that uh, many times it's not one size fits all. Uh, what we need to do is to be, have a, just that little bit more sensitivity. Uh, the other thing is that you need a bit of luck. We have a, 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 we have a, a saying in Hebrew which says, it rhymes, I'll translate it, kol dabat sadich mazal afilu ha-sefer shebehechal. Everything needs a bit of luck. Even the holy book of the law, which is in the uh, ark, in the synagogue, sometimes it's taken out every week, and there's another one, it's hardly taken out once a year. Even the holiest things need a bit of luck. Hi. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I'm wondering if you have any um, implications in, in matters of conclusions, whether it's from the India case or from the system approach, when it comes to really implying changes in the, the way we look at food in Israel. Um, if you have any conclusions about what incentives could work, let's say if we want to um, omit or reduce the amount of uh, meat consumption or um, production towards uh, more uh, vegetarian or vegan diets, I mean, what could work on farmers, what kind of incentives would work if you talked about subsidized or you talked about a supply chain? Do you have any um, advices that we can implement when we actually trying to be active towards a more sustainable way? <clears throat> Especially when it comes to economical tools. Um, you know, the issue of, of uh, meat consumption and the human condition is is an interesting one. There's been a law that most nutritionists have learned a long time ago that as people's income goes up, they consume more animal products and more meat. And uh, the slide I showed uh, with the predictions that uh, had come out of this European study uh, was based on the fact that rising income in uh, various parts of the world, uh, and it's happening right now. It's just happened in China, particularly. The, uh, uh, as the income and so forth has gone up in China, the consumption of, of uh, animal products and meat has gone, has gone way up. So that there's this human condition that is very hard to fight when it, when it comes to uh, uh, interest in the kind of food that people want to consume. And, and so, um, you know, we've been, uh, uh, the, the nutrition community has been uh, uh, essentially fighting for people to moderate their consumption of, uh, of meat products. Uh, in the United States, our beef consumption has gone down, uh, and uh, uh, probably that has happened because of the cost of beef more as it has than it has been an altruistic way of getting rid of greenhouse gases. But uh, and poultry production has and poultry consumption has gone up because of uh, Price has been very cheap, and so forth, and that's a pattern that you see as you look at uh, at uh, uh, the way consumers have responded around the world. So I think it's going to take a um, uh, you know a, a set of of um, 
educational efforts, uh, a set of price uh, situations to recognize the, as I, I showed, the natural cost, the natural capital cost of beef production is going to be very high. That might be reflected in its price, and so that may have some effect. But it's not an easy thing to say, don't eat so much meat. <clears throat> I just want to add that I, th I used to think Israel has water problems, for example. Uh, I don't think Israel has a real water problem. When you want to see a real water problem, you go to India, you go to China, you go to Africa. And I don't think, I think Israel's um, problems pale in comparison to those problems. And I think that Israel should not be worrying about so much its own domestic problems, but should be worried about the global problems in agriculture environment because it has a lot to contribute potentially and I think that's what we need should be focused on frankly. I also want to say that tomorrow we have a panel with uh, the issues of farmers in Israel so you're all welcome to discuss these issues uh, in more uh, depth. Any last questions? Okay so we're going to take a break for the quarter to two, quarter to four. Thank you.